Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon and today we're looking at a Vespiquen variant and it's a very interesting variant since Sun and Moon's come out because it's pretty much developed into being a deck that tries to hit the world for weakness and um, really we just shove in a bunch of different attackers and we try and literally just hit times 2 damage against a majority of the format uh, using things like the new Persimian, the Mew and the evolutions as well as the Vespiquen itself we're hoping to gain different type coverages and simply just one hit KO things from there so let's uh, jump into the list first of all the sometimes main attacker is going to be Vespiquen uh, Vespiquen always gets powerful at some point in the game um, oftentimes we're trying to use the evolutions to make sure that we hit times two for weakness on things but in general this guy can still get beefy just by putting lots of Pokemon into the discard pile because its main attack is for a double colourless be revenged of 20 plus 10 more for each of your Pokemon in the discard pile so playing 27 total Pokemon in this list um, does make it fairly easy to simply dump everything that you don't need in the matchup and start piling up damage for be revenge that's as simple as it gets really for Vespiquen we have Ultra Ball, Acro Bike, Sycamore, uh, Unknown discards itself and we're also playing Skyfield in this list, so whenever people uh, bounce the Skyfield, we can also discard Pokemon via that way as well. So that's fantastic. It's a Grass type, which doesn't actually hit for much in the format right now. Uh, only really Lapras, um, and uh, can't think of many other things. I guess Primarina. Um, shout out to Russell. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. It's a free retreater though, which is very nice. 90 HP is okay. It does have intelligence gathering that can sometimes draw you up to six if you're in a real spot. Um, but you do sort of have to spend a DC for that because it's the only type of energy that we play in this list. So yeah, sometimes the main attacker, <clears throat> definitely in late game, this always becomes a threat that can one hit KO even when you're not hitting for weakness. So um, yeah, maxing out this count, not necessarily because you need to use four in a game, but because you want to have your excess pieces being chucked into the discard pile um, to fuel its own attack. From there we have the evolutions. The evolution package, we're choosing not to play any of the new GX's. Um, we just feel like playing more than four energy, non-DCE's, um, clunk out the deck too much. I know that Espeon and Umbreon both have their merits for different reasons, uh, but we just think, you know what, we just like the evolution package as it is right now because these are three very common weaknesses that we can hit. We still play the new Eevee because it has quick draw, Again, it's one of these things where you rarely want to spend a DC to do this, but um, you can. Um, its ability will never come into play because we only play DCE. But the abilities of the other three are very, very useful. <clears throat> Umbreon with the Flare Effect means that we can now hit times 2 weakness on Lorantis players as well as uh, Decidueye players. Decidueye is still a rough matchup for this deck, believe it or not. So um, having the Flare on is very important for that. So good typing there. Also Solgaleo. Um, Jolteon is going to be great so that we can one-hit KO Shamans, not to mention Rayquaza. Um, you may think you've Eltol, but oftentimes they're playing Garb. At least we force them to get Garb out. Um, and of course we can Lysander KO Garb and then enable our abilities so Jolteon works. At the same time they can Lysander KO Jolteon. So this is more of a deterrent for the Eveltol players, but it's really in here to help out against Rayquaza more than anything else. Um, and then we have Vaporeon because otherwise Volk is a slaughter. Um, we get absolutely destroyed by Volk without Vaporeon in the list. We feel comfortable enough playing only single counts of each of these cards because we are playing Town Map and we are also playing Buddy Buddy Rescues in the list to recover them if they are being Lysander KO'd or if we had to Acro Bike or Sycamore them away in the early turns. We know that we can get them back if they're absolutely essential. But in those matchups that I mentioned just now, if it's not one of those matchups, they go in the bin, Vespiquen gets more powerful. That's basically how this deck works. From there, we're playing the new Persimian package that we get from Sun and Moon. It's a very decent uh, basic Pokemon with fighting typing. So against Turbo Dark, he is definitely the go-to option. Team play for a DC does 10 base, plus 30 more for each of your benched Persimian. So if this guy's active, your three other Persimians are on the bench, you can deal 100. That's 200 against a Darkrai, and as long as they don't have Fury Belt on board, that's a one-hit KO. Um, bear in mind, you don't even need to one-hit KO against the Darkrai all the time. You can try and poke with a Shaman beforehand, you can poke with Tauros, you can poke with a bunch of different things in this list. Um, so just being an almost two-for-one is good enough a lot of the time. 
and sometimes they won't have Fury Belt, and then you absolutely wreck them. And uh, the same thing can be said for Tauros. Again, that's a fairly popular card in some lists. Um, being able to simply burst through those Radici is fantastic for you in the early game for pressure. And that's one thing that Vespacon is really bad at in the early turns. It really doesn't have much damage in the opening. So oftentimes, <clears throat> oftentimes the deck will initiate the Persimian deck, basically. It's going to try and search out as many Persimian as possible. We also have Mew in the list as well. Um, so we should be able to start getting a reasonable amount of counters on the board while we're still trying to power up Vespiquens in the background. So it's good against Turbo Dark and Tauros, and it's also helpful just in general matchups because his output is better than Vespiquen in the early turns. Like I mentioned, the Mew is in here. Mew is great for Persimian because it means we can now have all of them on the bench, so our base output goes up to 130 damage for a DCE, which is very, very good. We can also copy Tauros and Shaman with this attack, so um, uh, with its ability, I should say, Memories of Dawn, which is fantastic. We do have the attack encounter as well, allowing us to search a deck for a Pokemon and put it straight to hand. This can actually be a bailout option for you if you are up against item lock, which really does suck for you. But if you can encounter and find Tauros, maybe you have a chance. Um, it does, again, have free retreat, so we have a lot of good starters in this list, really. We have the two Mew. Persimian, I would say, is a good starter, as is Tauros. And, um, yeah, lots of good starting options for us. And additionally, let's not sleep on the fact that Mew is a Psychic type, so we can absolutely destroy Mewtwo as well, as long as we have our abilities up. Obviously, we can have opportunities to KO their Garbodors, and from there, Mew should be able to mop up prizes. Uh, only really need two, because a lot of the time we use Persimian himself, against the, the dark stuff and again buddy buddy is a crutch card in this deck um in the right matchups you just pick the right targets to recover basically from there basically we're just using uh the one of tauros because <clears throat> we don't have any other gx attackers in the list so having him just in the early turns again like i'm saying vespiquins just sort of chilling and trying to get powerful why not just throw tauros in the active so the opponent is struggling to set up their own side of the board or starting to take early prizes against us. We can just sit with Tauros, either they do hit ropes or they do hit Lysanders, or they don't, and then they basically just end up doing nothing because they're in fear of getting hit with a big old Mad Bull GX, which we can do. And also in the early turns, putting horn attacks on things can be really, uh, very relevant for numbers. Um, it can lead into a Persimian with a four bench and using Mew to hit 190, which is really good. Um, and again, it just sets you up for Vespiquen and helps you just establish your board, really, by just having a DCE basic in the active. It's all you need, it's pretty simple, and it's difficult to deal with for a bunch of decks. Um, from there, we're using one Persimian. Uh, what am I saying? This is the other monkey. Oranguru has 120 HP as a basic. It has the ability Instruct. Once during a turn, you may draw cards until you have three in your hand. This is nice protection against the likes of Delinquent and N in the late game where we need to keep digging for our last DCE or our last Lysander. Hopefully, if Oranguru's been able to stay around on the bench and we have our abilities online, we can uh, try and get value out of this guy to finish off and get the right pieces to finish off the game, basically. It does have an attack called Psychic for three colorless energy, which does 60 plus 20 more times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active, but you will very rarely ever use this attack. And then we just have two Shaman for the draw power and uh, four unknown for the additional bit of draw power, as well as um, just increasing the Pokemon count to improve our overall output. So for trainers, the town map is really crucial because uh, we have lots of one-offs, supporter-wise, Pokemon-wise, Persimian, even though it's a four-of, is important to get out the prizes, DCE as well, even though it's a four-of, you want to search this out. So town map is fantastic in this deck. It really makes us able to cut corners in a lot of situations, you can see some of our support accounts are just one ofs, whereas things like Lysander's typically are two of. Um, we try and get away with it because Town Map basically buys us a lot of slots and helps us throughout the game, really. Uh, we are playing two Special Charge to recycle our DCEs. It's pretty important. There's a few hammer based decks around and there's things with higher HP, so DCEs don't really net us guaranteed KOs anymore, so having the recycle is important. Uh, two Buddy Buddy, I've already mentioned how this can be helpful in a couple of scenarios, really good for getting back evolutions if it's the right um, matchups, also Persimian, also Mew, 
all these different things. Basically, the attacker that's most annoying, you want to recycle it in that matchup, so Buddy Buddy is important. For Acrobike, great for just some extra cycle in the early turns, literally, and we can get more Pokemon in the discard as well with Acro if we get lucky. Uh, for Ultra Ball, great for discarding pokes and drawing cards with Shaman or whatever else we need. The 4 VS Seeker just spamming the right supporters that we need. And uh, 2 Skyfield, I've already mentioned, really helps out with Persimian because we want to fill that up on the bench, but also we want to hit Combees and Shaman and all the other stuff, so we need to extend our bench and basically we bait our opponent to replace the stadium because then we effectively can get a whole bunch more damage in the discard pile just by discarding those shamans and whatever else is just chilling on the bench <clears throat> then on to the supporters one of lysander to make sure that we can deal with exs or the thing that we can hit for weakness um lysander's very good bear in mind you can also ko hoopers and stuff like that so yeah lysander as a one of is really really good i would be really tempted to play too, uh, but right now I don't have the space. I'm actually choosing Bridget over it, <laughs> um, over second Lysander at least. Uh, I think we get away with it with Town Map, to be honest. Uh, the one of teammates is also a very good card. It can guarantee DCE, which no other card in the game can do right now. So teammates very good for that. Gets you into your next attacker, gets you all sorts of different pieces. Uh, the end, just for some shuffle draw, if you need to disrupt your opponent, and if... Uh, you have a hand that you can't discard, like you've got double special charge in hand or something, so you can't sick them all, ends a good option. Bridget is a one-of, which some of you are probably cringing at straight away, but if you've managed to stay and watch this far, maybe you'll hear me out. Um, it's a really good turn one play. It's as simple as that. It's it's a really fantastic turn one play for this deck. Um, gets you loads of Persimians out, gets you like double EV down if it's important in that matchup, gets you plenty of comb me down it gets you unknowns even to draw you extra cards if need be it can also almost act as like a plus power at times because bridget can search out the unknowns which then you can discard um, to get you your last bits of extra damage to get the vespiquin going so plenty of reasons why bridget is an okay card i think it's only ever okay fantastic early game like you always want to see it early game um but mid to late game it is fairly dead so i wouldn't be surprised if you guys end up cutting this and just not trusting me um, but I think it's worth the slot just for how valuable it can be in the opening turns. Uh, and then just for Sycamore, because it is Professor Sycamore, still very important. Gets rid of Pokemon as well. It's like extra benefits on top of everything else. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. Then we're just playing two Floatstone, important for Tauros and Oranguru, um, because they're kind of chunky. And just in general, if anything just gets caught in the active, if we happen to lead unknown or something annoying, and we want to be attacking, uh, we can just Floatstone up, retreat out of there. So that we don't have to spend our attachment for turn. Now speaking of attachments, 4 DCE is the only energy that we play. It's all we need. The entire deck functions off DCE. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's look at, um, before I close out of here, let's look at options. Because if, if there's one thing that Vespiquen has, it's going to be options. A few people like Zoroark. I've played Zoroark in the past. Uh, Stand-in is a fantastic ability. Um, it combos nicely with Tauros as well. If you play Zoro build, I'm more tempted to play double Tauros because you're not worried about getting stalled at all because of the ability that Zoroark has. Mindjack is also a very decent attack. Keeps your opponent in check a lot of the time. Fantastic for Rayquaza. Um, and Rainbow Force as well. Doing 30 times the amount of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This could be handy um, for a bunch of different reasons. You could even consider the break if you want to play one or two Dark Energies as well. Because uh, foul play can copy GX attacks, so that's pretty cool uh, if you really want to. There's also Zebra. Um, I think if you're... Um, oh my goodness, I just had it. There we go. Um, if you're considering lots of Uveltal and lots of uh, Ray, you can play this over the, um, uh, over the EV package. Um, because this is so much better against Uveltal. It just really is, because they can't just Garbodor to shut off like they can with Jolteon. So if you're feeling that there's going to be a lot of Uveltal Garb, I'd be more content with the Zeb Striker. Only showing off this list now, because I think um, Volcanion is like as popular as Uveltal, if not more. So I'd rather have the option to have all of them in it, uh, whereas Zeb Striker just focus on one thing. Um, and I guess Ray as well, but yeah. Uh, from there, other Pokemon, Klefki has often been used. Um, where is it? There it is. For its Wonderlock ability, this can just give you more explosive turns with the Vespiquen. 
But because we are playing for Simeon now, I feel like you don't have to be explosive with Vespi. Uh, so we're pretty content to not play it, especially because the Megas out there right now, mainly in Mewtwo, and they play Garb anyway. Um, Gardi plays Rattata. And Ray, I mean, it could be annoying for Ray, but I feel like that's the least of our concerns with this specific deck, because we have the Jolteon anyway. Um, so I think we can just get by without Clefkeys, to be honest. Looking at other items and things like that, Nest Ball is a card that can improve your Persimian uh, damage, obviously. It's similar to Bridget. I really only had space for one Nest Ball, so I was playing a single Nest. Uh, it just wasn't doing enough. It wasn't an impactful enough card, so I switched out for Bridget, and it's done okay in a few games. So it sort of stayed for now. Um, but if you want to turn this deck more heavily towards Persimian, Nest Ball is a really good option, definitely. Um, there's also, weirdly enough, Parallel City is a card that you could choose to play. Even though you are playing Skyfield, you might want to put one Parallel in here additionally, so that you go from an 8 bench to a 3 bench, and you can discard you know, a minimum of 5 Pokemon from your bench, which is a plus 50 of damage. And at the same time, you're getting rid of your own Shamans and stuff like that as well. So yeah, those are pretty much the main options. Uh, Lily, I guess, is a supporter that you can always consider, because it is pretty good. Uh, right now, I think you want to dig for Sycamore too much. Um, but yeah, um, that's just about it. Let's uh, jump into the ladder now and get some games in. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Hopefully we can hit things for weakness. That's basically the idea of the deck. Uh, looks like it's probably a Dark Garb here. Could be Turbo Dark. If it's Turbo Dark, we just get the monkeys out and we win. Um, if it's Eveltol, it's a complicated game. We lead Tauros, which is, thanks to the floatstone in our hand, pretty much the best thing we could hope for. And looks like it's Darkrai, so we just rub our hand together and say, ha ha ha, I hit you for weakness. And that's going to be the win condition in this game. They do play Uveltol though, so maybe they play... Like, even one Uveltol, one Uveltol EX can be a threat for this deck, so... Um, we'll have to wait and see here. <clears throat> it's typical that regular Speed Dark just play one uh, Uveltol anyway. Okay. We have a hand that we would like to Sycamore away. And uh, let's see if we prize any Persimians. No, that's good news. We can start off with an unknown here. Not the fastest of hands, but we can get a Horn attack in, which is going to be good for us. Uh, we can Acrobike. I can quite comfortably get rid of a Combi, maybe. Uh, Lysander's good in the discard pile as well. I know that I won't be Lysandering next turn, so... We can just do these things. Uh, putting this down is cool. Four Pokemon. I really like keeping the slots open for um, Skyfields, but because we don't have one yet anyway, it's not too important. We can just go for Combi, and I'm just going to fire off a Horn Attack here. Start putting pressure on Darkrai. If there's one thing Darkrai doesn't like, it's a Tauros in the face. Uh, it's very awkward to deal with. They have to spend things like um, escape rope, which we see straight away. Um, so, they need to either Kakui or Floatstone attach to even get a KO here. I want to go into Combi just because I have the teammates in hand and I feel like that's really, really good for us. There's an EXP share that also goes onto the bench and there's a Sycamore. So they're digging hard for the Floatstone here. Or another switch card. Going to see the Ultra Ball. The best thing is that our hand's been so poor that we've concealed the Persimian. So he could go for Hooper here and get a bunch of Darkrai. Oh, he just went for one Darkrai. Okay. That's still fine. Okay, here come all the Darkrais. Good news, boys. And there's going to be Shaman for five. See if they can find Floatstone. Can they Max Elixir? There's a Silent Lab. Ninja Boy. Is 
but they too could easily be playing Tauros in their list. Gonna see just the Oblivion Wing for 30. How good is Mew? Mew's really bad in this matchup. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. He's still a while away from getting a KO with uh, Dark Cry. The Eevees are useless. Okay, I'm just going to grab Passimian. I need to start grabbing them, right? Animal horn attack here. So we get delinquented, which is pretty grim. The only way we could have played around it last turn was. Um, Evolving into Vespi rather than um, finding Persimian because then we keep Floatstone in hand and then we can keep DCE. But we have Oranguru, so it's pretty chill anyway. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So, hmm. Don't want to commit a DCE because we've already lost one due to unfortunate circumstances. Simeon we can bench and we'll just fire off the horn attack so this is what we say about Tauros Tauros just slow you've seen how it's just slowed the game right down previously for Vespiquen they'd be charging through Combies and Vespies very very quickly because of our low HP and here we just sort of have the time to develop our board which is really good for us Okay. Still think I want to go into Taurus here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 with the EXP share. So 14 is just one attachment away. But I still think Taurus is the best here while we just keep looking for Persimian. That's a good card because it's into play. This means that we can get an extra draw. Pretty good cards. Powering up the Persimians. We'll just go for the Horn Attack and we'll take a. Uh, I think I just take a draw card here. Like Acrobike. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> What's going on here? Town map, no. Why you do this to me, town map? Oh, come on, game. I can't even, like, cry to him. <laughs> Can I? What's going on here? Give me, just give me the best me. I'll take it. Uh, uh, sadness. Okay. That's ridiculous. Okay. But I think it's fair to say that was a fairly comfortable board state where we were at. Pretty sure we were in a comfortable state there. We'll find another game. And we'll see what we are up against. That was pretty sad. Nothing like hitting loads of dark cries in the face.
Okay, what's our best lead here? Uh, I guess Eevee. <clears throat> so, new game. <laughs> this time we'll be careful about uh, taking our prizes. Huh. Okay, it's a Valplume variant. So we sit back and get scared. A shaman for two doesn't sound too great. Okay, they have more cards to play. Fury Belt. Hmm. What plume variant plays Fury Belt? Tauros Plume? Probably Taurus Plume. Where we want to bridge it and find our Simeons and win the game. <laughs> Gonna see it floats down onto Oddish straight away. Another Ultra Ball, plenty more digging to go. Got rid of two Glooms early though. Plays Grass Energy as well as DCE. Really don't know what this is. There's a forest. And a sycamore. Getting rid of basic lightning. Now I'm even more confused. Jeez. More fury belts as well. So much confusion going on right now. Okay, we haven't been hit with a plume. And that's great news. Let's draw three cards. And we'll stick them all. Float stone's pretty good. Getting rid of free Vespi straight away sounds pretty bad to me. So we'll draw a card so that we don't have to ultra ball away the Vespi. That's a free card to get rid of. I could just cycle it for another card, but I think it's one of the best things that we could discard painlessly. Taurus isn't a bad card to pick up here, just to throw into the active. We have prized that other Shaman, unfortunately. Um, going for Vespi so that next turn my Sycamore isn't as bad. I think Taurus is our best card, so... Uh, we can actually Oranguru before the unknown. Maybe hit the DCE. Well, that's incredible. Okay, that's unknown as well. Try and hit the Combi. Let's just call out the cards today. <laughs> <laughs> Scumbag Joe. Um, I think I'm pretty safe in the in the active here, to be honest. If I go into Taurus, I can just get Sky Return for like a few turns. So I like holding the DCE as an option to Vespi next turn. Well, wow, that was some pretty good draws from Unknown and Oranguru. Impressive. Let's see if they can uh, find their last Gloom in deck this turn. And an attacker as well. I don't know what they're playing as an attacker. Need to know before I commit an evolution. Okay, Forest is step one of their plans. 
their schemes. Water energy. All sorts of energy in this list. Super funky. Lysander on Combi makes me pretty sad. <clears throat> I could have Skyrim and bounced at the end of last turn. I probably should have done that. Because I might be doing it now. Right. One draw to get a Comey so I can insta evolve into a Vespi. Ah, oh, that's bad. Let's Sky return. Gonna protect uh protect the Mew over the Eevee here because the Mew is likely to be an attacker at some point in the game. An Eevee is most certainly not. And we're going to get hit with an N here. Not too sad about that. Going to be Vespi. That's pretty good. There's a level ball for a Gloom. Their last one. Most likely last, anyway. Do they have the Valplume follow up? And do they want to with this with this sort of board state? I don't even know. These are all questions we need to answer. Ultra Ball gets rid of Okay, so it is gonna be a Taurus build. It's gonna be an awkward game. It's gonna be Taurus on Taurus action, I think. They've already got rid of one Lysander though. Oh no, they got rid of two? Ooh, that could be all of them. Because it is a Varplume build. So, as long as we just shove our Taurus in the active, they can't really shove their Taurus in the active. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see. This could be fun. Okay, they put Plume down as well. So, they can't Fury Belt their Taurus now either. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting times. They retreat into the Vile Plume as well. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's do some evolving. DC is somewhat of a shame. Now the Jolteon is worth keeping because it denies a Sky Return loop. So we'll just retreat into Mew. If a parallel comes down, what do I discard? 
I think I discard the Jolteon. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Because it goes to nine, ten, so I can already KO Shamans then. Obviously the Mew. Uh, the Shaman. Yeah, so we keep those five. The things on the ends, they get chopped off if we get our stadium bounced. Right. Brave man putting down Tauros. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, they're going to Sycamore as well. Here comes Taurus. Oh, they are going to get rid of the stadium. Cool. We can go into our free retreater. DC has arrived. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's initiate. Because then we can move in with monkeys afterwards. Or Tauros. If we finish with Tauros next turn, it's kind of like a checkmate to him. We can just pass the rest of the turns away. Yeah, I don't know. They could try and mill us out. Hmm. We need to access these guys pretty sh quick. They chose to pass. That's an interesting one. Oh, okay. They shouldn't have passed. <laughs> they conceded. Well, we've had two Beetle games. Hooray! Maybe we'll have a real one in a minute. Let's try our best, shall we? One more game. Elite Small. Bring us a game. Uh... Every game so far has been just a weird one. A plume deck that didn't get plume till turn like four. Oh, the dream. Bridget turn one. If this is Turbo Dark, I'm Bridgeting every day of the week here. And then they just concede. <laughs> they just concede. Okay, it's Umbreon. So, we still do this. Jolton is in here. I think I'd force the Eveltol. Because then, if I force the Eveltol, they'll start attaching to Eveltol as soon as they see Persimians. So then Taurus gets his first prize. And then, if it's an Umbreon deck, it really has much acceleration. So, I still quite like this. Let's pass. 
If only it was Darkrai. Oh, it is Burn Elixirs. So this could be Heavy Veltol with like a thin line of Umbreon. Which means it might not play Garb. That might be where they have made their cut, which might mean that Jolteon is the MVP. Or they fit it all in somehow. Floatstone to Eevee. Oh, their manual attachment is still to Eevee. Giving us potentially two prizes next turn. Obviously they can choose to strafe away, but... Going to see an Ultra Ball for Shaman, it looks like. They might even strafe to Shaman. It's probably their play. Can't think of a much smarter one. Yep, we are going to see Strafe at the very least. And they actually choose to stay active. Okay, that also makes some sense. Start by drawing a card. DC is a good card. I could just bridge it. Bridget OP. Just grab this as well, I think. I want to be able to establish um, uh, Jolteon quickly. But I guess that doesn't really do it. I guess we could just go unknown and then I'll put the Combi down afterwards. Skyfield's a good pickup. Uh, playing it. Definitely. Let's do some Monkey Madness. For the team. Quick two prizes. All thanks to Bridget. And thanks to Weakness. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Maybe a contributing factor. Okay, here comes Yveltal. Kikui. And just gonna see Evil Ball. We can go into Tauros. Vespiquen's a really good pickup. No buddy buddy. The opponent gets back to Eevee. We shall take Simeon. Gonna commit DC to him. I'm going to Acrobike away Vaporeon because I hear Shaman is a good card. Word on the street. Bridget might once again be my supporter for turn. But Ultra Ball this, Bridget EV plus Guru? EV plus EV? EV plus Combi? It's all good news. Let's do it. That moment when Bridget's the only supporter you play and you win the game.
I'm not taking a prize, so I might want to stay out of delinquent range. Let's do that. Don't want to throw the game for myself, really. Okay, let's get a cheeky bit of 80 damage on the Eveltal. Set it up real quick. So the opponent knows they have to end us, basically. Six in the discard pile so far, which isn't much, but that can go to seven, eight, one sixty if Jolteon's established. More energy to Yveltal. Looks like it's all they have. Maybe Lysander here. Maybe Kikui Y Cyclone. Who knows? Yep, Kikui. <laughs> the only supporters this game have been Bridget and Kikui. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Ooh, Assault Vest. It's pretty good. Doesn't keep it alive. As long as we hit DCE. They should have cocooed before their attachment for turn, I think. Anyway. Right then, so what are we at? Three, four, five, six, seven, seven to nine, nine to 180. Great news, let's just not whiff a DCE. That would be grand. Uh, sure. Damn, okay, we can dig harder, it's fine. Put these in. Uh oh, game froze again. It's happening way too much today. Okay. Three draws. Let's get lucky. Always lucky. And will be revenge. So the opponent needs like Elixir, DCE, Floatstone, N really to stay in this game. If they parallel, oh wow, they evolved into Umbreon. I guess we have filled up our bench, so. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They really can't remove Skyfield because it can lose them the game. They got Lysander up Shaman. And they're gonna strafe. And they have to stay active, of course. We don't have a Lysander, which is a shame. I think paying retreat is better here than just a sky return play. 
we get special charge out of the hand and we're pressuring a lot more damage Dark Call GX is the play. Yeah, they are fitting Garbador in there. I think uh, it just seems like their list has too much going on in it. Garb and Umbreon seems clunky to me. I prefer just the Veltal Taurus Garb and then just leave Umbreon as a different. Oh my goodness, they're giving us lots of damage here. One, two. Okay. I think all the monkeys go. Because now we have all three retreaters. We hit hard enough with Vesp. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're at 160 with Vesp. Yeah. That's going to be the Dark Call. That's all they can do, really. Well, there's a lovely, lovely top deck. I mean, we had Sycamore to dig, but that just makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? All right, then. Um, when they weren't able to develop Garbodor, Jolteon's pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, those are three really weird games. Nothing drew normally that game. I think his... He had a bad supporter drought in the opening turns, Kakui being his only draw supporter. Um, I was free to bridge it away, which was fun. Um, meant that I could get that KO on turn 2 against a 200 HP Pokemon, so who's laughing at Bridget now? Um, yeah, that's the list guys. Uh, I implore you to test it out and uh, tell me your favourite tech attackers for Vespiquen. Uh, how testing's gone for you. Is it a genuine contender in the format or is it a little bit too gimmicky, a little bit too un, uh, inconsistent? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this deck and anything else Sun and Moon related down the co in the comment section below. Let me know what deck you want to see next time and uh, I'll see you there in a couple days. On uh, Monday I think we're doing Mega Array and uh, from there the format is open to test whatever we want. So let me know what you guys want to see next on the channel. Leave a like to this video if you did, subscribe to the channel if not already, and uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys soon.